Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Dad? I've actually connected this 113-year-old phone to Microsoft Teams. It's working. This is the Margari Ward phone. Yes, this is the oldest piece of electronic technology I've ever touched. This is a Montgomery Ward diamond bridging telephone from around 1907. This phone was old before my grandparents were even born. It predates World War I. It's older than the Great Depression and potentially the Ford Model T. So in this video, we're going to explore this phone. Examine we got it for free, by the way. Yeah. We're going to examine all the parts inside, which, believe it or not, are mostly still working. When I got this phone, I really should have called it parts of a phone because there's clearly some pieces missing. This photo shows what it originally looked like. Note on the little stamp on the front, it talks about where Montgomery Ward was located at Madison and Michigan Avenue in Chicago. Montgomery Ward was the oldest mail order company, and according to Wikipedia, this location uh, was one of their stores. They had a huge presence in Chicago, and so did early telephone manufacturers. Went back and looked at uh, Google Maps today, and there's just a Panera Bread store there. What? <laughs> anyway, yeah, the company went bankrupt in 2001, but that's a whole nother story. Well, so they went bankrupt, and now there's a Panera Bread. Yep. Good job, Panera Bread, for taking your restaurant. Before I continue, one last bit of history. Many of the images in this video came from a book called Rural Telephone Lines and How to Build Them by Montgomery Ward, and uh, you can find that on telephonecollectors.info. And also, the cost of this phone when it was new was a whopping $12. For the rest of the video, we're gonna look inside the phone and uh, start taking a look at each of the electronic components. There are several compartments. On the bottom, there used to be batteries, and this thing in the middle is a magneto, which uh, generates ringing voltage when you crank it. And at the top is There's these- There's probably just a few of these left in the world. Yeah, it's pre probably pretty rare. At the top is the switch hook, which works just like a current landline. You take it on and off hook. And mounted on this door is the ringer, which is an electromagnetic uh, electromagnet that rings the bells. The internal wiring of this phone is also very unique. The hinges of the box are actually used as conductors. I've never seen that before. On the back, behind this wood panel, the wires are laid out to connect the various components. None of these wires are insulated. It obviously took a while to hand wire all this stuff. I'm not sure why they use like the hinges. six days to wire that. I don't know. I'm not sure why they use the hinges like this, but maybe just for a neat appearance or not to have wires hanging through the uh, various compartments that would touch things. This top part that looks like a Trivial Pursuit game piece. Or a Game of Life piece. Is a lightning protector to safeguard your phone from power surges. Like electricity? Yeah. The first component of this phone we're going to look at is the microphone uh, or transmitter. And believe it or not, it still works. Here's an audio sample. Looking inside the microphone, it was kind of rusty and some of the parts were crumbling, uh, but this is actually how I determine the age of the phone. If you can see the date stamp here starts with the J-U, June, J-U-N there, and the stamp is kind of blurry, but you can clearly make out this phone was manufactured on June 23rd, 1907. So here, here's another sample after we cleaned it up and put everything back together. Hello, it's pretty amazing to compare this huge microphone to this tiny electric condenser mic from the early 2000s that does the same thing. I ended up mounting this mic behind that one and having a switch so I could switch microphones. When this phone was given to me, the receiver or speaker was completely missing. And it, the wires kind of look like a rope instead of wires. They but do. there is wires in there. So how would I ever find a replacement for that for a 1907 phone? Well, believe it or not, there's a website called oldphoneworks.com that sells all sorts of refurbished and replacement parts. I ended up ordering this thing. This is a replica receiver that matches this phone. It looks pretty nice. There's plenty of room inside to mount a little speaker, and it's got a bit of weight added to it so it can actually hold the switch hook down. I'll put a link in the video description to their website. If anybody has any phones that they want to repair. I happen to have an old analog computer headset that has been sitting in a box for about 10 years. Most people use USB, so this will probably never get used. But it has a nice long cord, and I'm never going to use it as these analog terminals. So I decided to kind of uh, mount that inside the earpiece, mount the speaker inside the earpiece, and then have that microphone behind. So you cutted it? Yeah, I just sort of gutted it. The actual wires, notice those wires are pink and blue on the inside, but the outside is this faded yellow. In and they terminate in those screw terminals there. I ended up testing the continuity of these wires. One of them was fine, the other one was flaky, so I ended up removing the flaky one and putting my own small wire inside of that cloth insulation so it sort of maintains that retro look and feel. Yeah, 
Yeah, are you probably wondering why do do the wires look like ropes? Right. Well, I, I guess they just didn't have uh, stronger wires. They, they didn't have the plastic insulation that we do, so they used cloth. That's probably was more expensive to produce. Well, lots of anyway, fires. Now let's move on to the most interesting and educational component of this phone, the magneto. This is an electromagnetic generator that generates alternating current on the line to ring another telephone. It's also where the majority of the weight of this phone comes from. An interesting fact about magnetos is that for a period of time, there were laws on the books in some states in the U.S. that made it illegal to use telephones for fishing. That's right, using telephones for fishing. You could take this magneto in a boat and stun fish by generating electrical current in the water. <laughs> it only generates a few volts from what I can tell, but one time I accidentally touched the output terminals, I could definitely feel it. Yeah, this whole process was very educational because you can really see it is wire coils that are tied with a little string there and they rotate around these magnets and it's just the basic principles of Electra. Is it kind of different from the Tesla coil? I, I don't know. I think it might that might be different. But anyway, it's the basic electromagnetic principles behind electronic motors. Now let's move on to the phone's ringer. This is a little hammer that moves and strikes two bells. This phone only had one of its bells and a mount was broken, so we'll need to fix that. Yeah, that looks shiny. Yeah, I, I polished it up a little. The ringer assembly itself is just another, uh, it's just a couple of coils of wire and it's another application More of... More coils? Yeah, it's just an application of these basic electromagnetic principles. They didn't have a ton of technology today, so they just used some coils. Yeah, this needs alternating current to alternate those two coils and I'm using a DC battery so you can see if I reverse the polarity I can make the hammer swing back and forth. And you'll note that it has a 2500 on it which indicates it's a 2500 ohm ringer. That was one of the types of ringers they offered in the catalog. And when I hook the magneto up to this, it actually generates the alternating current the ringer uses. So it, you can see it moving back and forth. It works fine. I got a second bell from eBay, but I also had to solve the problem of the broken bell mount. And I don't have access to any welding equipment. You're probably wondering, are we going to hang this up in our house so we can get calls from yeah. normal people with normal cell phones? Maybe. Anyway, I don't have access to any welding equipment, so I ended up using these uh, little bendable uh, file folder hangers from Office Depot to sort of support that bracket, and they were able to hold the the bell up just fine. Yeah, so we fixed the, 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 the bracket so it could hold the bell. We also uh, soldered and tie wrapped a newer wire to the old wiring so we wouldn't accidentally pull it loose. Here's what it sounds like. That's the original bell on the right and the eBay bell on the left. There were a couple more original components in the phone's top compartment to check out. This hook switch up here is just a simple switch. It still works. I verified that with a continuity tester. Behind the switch, you can see that green thing, which is the induction coil, which even the writers of this catalog had trouble describing, and they called it a very mysterious part of the telephone. It's a very mysterious and powerful device. And? And its mystery is only exceeded by its power. Right. But the induction coil, I think, was basically a transformer that took the cranking voltage and stepped it up for sending it out on the line. Anyway, it's been interesting to look at this old phone and to reflect on how the phone has changed over the years from wall phones all the way down to the mobile phones we use today. In the future, I hope... Soon there will be phones that we just do this. We open our palm with our hand and it shows up. Yeah. And it just hovers. I don't know. That would be and then you close your palm and then you can turn it off. In the future, I hope to mount the guts of an old touchtone phone inside the battery compartment so I can use it with both a computer and my voice over IP landline. But that's all for this installment. I'd like to thank our viewer, Mark, for sending the phone in to me for free. Thanks to everybody for subscribing. As of last week, we've officially reached 4,000 subscribers, which is a big milestone for us. Thanks again for watching, and... In a few years, we might be a million. See you next time for another awesome video. Bye-bye.